Pharma, right? That's what we're going to be talking about. They too have a brokerage note. A couple of brokerage notes have come in from the pharma space. And interesting developments, right? Because in the last six months, finally, that story seems to be turning around for the pharma sector, which was quite subdued in trade. Well, yes, absolutely, uh, Vinny. If you will see that post-COVID, we mm. have seen all these pharma counters doing well. But from mid-2021 till the start of this year, the pharma index was an underperformer that was down around 13%. But since the start of January 2023 till now, the pharma index has gone up around 33%. So a lot of factors that are, play, that are at play. First of all, the U.S. pricing environment it seemed to be improving. The U.S. drug shortage situation at one point in time was was at so many uh, elevated levels. Was at a multi-year uh, multi-year shortage that we have seen in the U.S. But that has now seen to be drifting lower. Other than that, the India growth has been supportive, though the growth in terms of the percentage terms has been in the single digit but all these factors were in play for the pharma sector but uh, that's about the pharma picture for 2023 but for today we're going to be putting the spotlight on two pharma names uh, firstly is Markson's Pharma where Systematics has come out with a note since uh, this company ex is into a pure play export business Systematics says that the company is building capacities in their key geographies that is US, UK and Australia in terms of the product launches the company will be coming out with five to eight products across geographies and along with that they are also looking to diversify their geographical presence with a new capex plan other than that when we talk about lupin this counter is also on the spotlight as park has come out with a note where they have gone ahead and upgraded the rating on this one where from an ad rating earlier this is now recommended to be a buy raise the target price to 1440 rupees they say that the base business margin levers are playing out for the company they have uh, shaped, uh, they have uh, improved or rather raised their EPS estimates for FY25 to 6% for and for FY26 by 10%. On the back of these brokerage notes, both of these counters are buzzing, looping up around 1.5% in trade as of now and Markson's gaining around 4.5% in trade. But along with that, if we talk about the whole pharma picture, Vinny, looks like that the pharma is set for a stellar laddie in 2024 as well. Absolutely. Seems like a stellar, a stellar rally is in place for pharma. But that to understand more on that, let's bring on what our experts for today. We have Kunal Botra as well as uh, Sharmila Joshi joining in with us. A very good afternoon. To, uh, good morning, actually, to both of you all as well. And uh, Kunal, I'm going to come to you. You know, leaving where uh, Shishti actually left her point was in terms of the stellar la rally that one could expect in uh, the pharma space. You know, because since May, June, I think mid of this year, Seems like the chart started moving up when I'm looking at the Nifty Pharma Index and a lot of these names started buzzing in trade as well. You know, do you think that is something that we could expect to continue news flow around this? Yes, surely shaping up well. But uh, on the charts, what is looking attractive? How are you seeing the Pharma Index? What would be your bets in the Pharma space? Good morning. So, yes, I would be very bullish on the Pharma Pack overall and uh, I think we've seen a classic blend in the Pharma Pack. Uh, you know, so for example, this year, uh, I categorically remember started off with three pharma stocks doing exceptionally well. I think it's Aurobindo Pharma, Glenmark and Zydus Life which started to show signs of very strong recovery. And then you saw I think mid uh, you know, mid of this year where the large cap pharma stocks picked up pace, the likes of Cipla, Lupin, Sun Pharma, many of these larger cap names they started to get into a strong trending mode. So we've seen both the parts playing out quite well, the mid cap end of the pharma stocks uh, leading the charge, then the large caps playing a catch up, and even at current levels, with the markets at an elevated uh, you know point, we generally expect that defensives are the ones which could probably get to a selling when the market gets into a risk on. But we've not seen that happening for pharma stocks. So I I would strongly believe that this could be a making of a multi-year uptrend for pharma stocks. Now difficult to pick and choose just one or two names from the uh, diverse basket of the pharma pack, but I will still stick with uh, you know or, or go with few large cap names. For example, Sun Pharma looks attractive at current levels from the mid cap and Glenmark, Zydus Life are the two stocks which I've been uh, recommending earlier and uh, I continue to be bullish on the stocks. Okay, so that's the take coming in from Kanal. Continues to be bullish on the pharma space and you also share his top recommendations. But Sharmila, coming to you first of all, a very good morning to you and what's your take on the pharma space? After a couple of years, the space has been doing well but given the fundamental picture as of now, will you be bullish on the pharma space for 2024 and any of your top recommendations? So, you know, just to uh, rewind a little, I think that uh, perhaps uh, pharma stock sort of... Uh, came back into focus once you saw that uh, 
uh, export data, I think around March, April of this year, was started to improve. And once that data started to improve, you began to see uh, stocks reflecting that, especially the uh, export facing uh, uh, pharma play, because you know th that was the space that was uh, lagging. While uh, domestic data and domestic sales uh, were strong, I think the whole concern was with what is happening uh, in the various markets that they are catering to, uh, where they are exporting, especially uh, US. Uh, so having said that, I think uh, you know that uh, you had to come out of that uh, the the winds, uh, the, once the COVID winds went and the kind of slump that you saw both in the diagnostic space as well as the pharma space, somewhere they had to bottom out and they had to start moving, which is what we've seen this year. Uh, coming to next year, just the way we are ending this year, uh, you know, with the kind of big bang that we are ending this year, also the fact that next year is an election year and pharma is a defensive play. So I think while it will do well, to my mind, uh, other sectors may take center stage. Uh, simply because, you know, the way we are poised just now in terms of earnings, the fact that we are getting into an election year, etc. So to my mind, maybe infra cement could be the spaces to uh, really track going into this year. But that doesn't mean that uh, pharma won't play its role. Uh, obviously, I think that will continue to do well, but it's a defensive play, so it might be a little bit on the back foot. Okay, that's the view that has come in uh, on the pharma space uh, from Sharmila. But, uh,